Well, hello, hello, yes. I'm here, I'm here. I'm late, but I'm here, I'm here. And I hope that many of you are joining me tonight. And if not, then you know that you can you can join me later. You can. I just want to say Merry, 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 Merry Christmas to all of my friends, my brothers and sisters, and Facebook, yeah, my family. Well, I just want to say that I pray that you and your family are well, and you have had a splendid day in worship, family fellowship, and let's not forget about the holiday shopping. Yes, many of you uh, may have gotten some holiday shopping in you know, during the weekend, but uh, let's not forget uh, the reason for the season. Yes, in all that we do, we want to keep Christ the head of all that we do in thanking him for all of his many, many blessings, and that or he is the reason for the seasons. Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. I want to welcome you, my friends. Yes, I welcome you to the Ever Better Christmas Show. Yes, the Ever Better Christmas Show. I am your minister and your family and early childhood educator. That's going to be important now. Your minister, most of all, your family and early childhood educator. I'm going to be sharing some, 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 some educational secrets or some educational high points with you. Okay, I can do that. Okay, Wanda J. Proud. That's who I am. Bringing you, my friend, issues of the heart. Yes, issues of the heart for the young and wise. Yes. Well, um, I want you to know, my friend, that today our show is, are you ready? Our show is, why keep dolls in Christmas? You know, I did a little, you know, a little PR yesterday on that. I, you know, I circulated it. I bet a lot of folks go, hmm. What's that? Why keep dolls in Christmas? Well, I want you to know that we're going to be focusing on, and not just focusing, but we're going to be focusing and differentiating, differentiating two key terms. And those two key, key terms are nurture, that's N-U-R-T-U-R-E, nurture, and nourish. Yes, we've heard those two terms, you know, uh, simultaneously throughout our careers, throughout our lives. But to nurture and to nourish are two different aspects of um, child rearing. Okay? Nurture, in U R T U R E, uh, it refers to long term care. When you nurture something for long term, but when you nourish, nourish is more present, you know, whether or not you are taking care of the immediate needs, you know, whether that be food or clothing, the immediate needs. Well, I want you to know that, you know, we've got to have our scripture now because everything we do, you know, Christ for everyday living, uh, everything is based on the word of God. But a lot of times, you know, because of timing, I don't have the time that I would like to, to really build and expound on the word, but hey, Let's just make sure we put at least a scripture in our in our pockets, in our mind, a foundation that we can build or our concept on. And that is Malachi 4 and 6. Did you get that? Malachi 4 and 6. And Malachi 4 and 6 is a very familiar scripture. And it simply says that God will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Did you get that? We're still talking about those dolls now. But Malachi 4 and 6 says that the prayer is that God will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. And this is the verse, of course, again, from Malachi 4 and 6. So just keep that in your mind as we begin to uh, uh, embrace our message for today. 
Again, nourish means to provide food, N-O-U-R-I-S-H. It is a short term, you know, where we're going to provide food or substance to a person or animal, plants, you know, just to keep them healthy, healthy from day to day. But when you nurture, oh, nurture, nurture, that's not one of those a hit and go situation. Nurture means that you're going to, you're going to, um, you, you, you're going to, uh, 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 you're going to be there. You're going to spend some time there. It means to take care of, to protect, to feed someone or something over a period of time. Oh, yes. Are you beginning to get the idea of where we're going right now? I want you to know, my friends, while others are coming on. Oh, yes, they know where I am right now. While they're coming on, please share. Right now, take time to share or tag some other parents and friends, even some church or youth leaders, because I want you to know, my friends, today, oh yes, today is an eye opener and will shed much insight for the emotional state of our youth. Oh, did I hear a bingo, bingo, bingo? There's so much talk about our youth. Oh, Oh, I could just cry. The youth, 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 the youth are doing this and the youth are doing that. And and and, and, and somebody even will have the nerve to say, let's pray that spirit of drugs will come off these children. Are you serious? The spirit of drugs? I mean, did, 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 you, did the, 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 the child not intake some type of chemical or substance? You mean it just sprinkled down on them? No, 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 no. Hey, my sisters and brothers, we're going to have some realistic approaches for undoing some of the things that we might have not, you know, you know, with no bad intentions. But, uh, uh, you know, we've got to put some homework into this. We've got to put some elbow grease in it. We've got to do things differently. It's not a pie in the sky type activity. And no, all this stuff just not come in the wind, it does not just fall from the sky. You know, yes, 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 yes. Okay, well, just stay with me right now. But I do want you to know that, yes, uh, go on and tag some friends. If you're just coming on, again, I want to prowl, yes, your minister, your family resource or educator, yes, yes, an early childhood educator, share some information on you today. Again, our subject is, why? Why, my friend? Why is keeping dolls, dolls in Christmas important? Why focusing on the two terms, nurture and nourishing? Okay. I want you to know, my friend, the major purpose for today's show, are you with me? The major purpose for today's show is that we will, I say we, we will consider the significance. Are you with me? We will consider the significance and the importance of nurture, which is long-term care, or nourishing, which is short-term care, for the preservation Keyword, preservation, preservation of next generational children. Humanity, as it relates to their social, emotional, physical, and intellectual growth and health of our children as we prepare them. I told you I wanted to cry. As we prepare them for adulthood. And as we prepare them for to be future parents. Hey, parents, it on us. What a 
are we doing to prepare them for their children? You know, they say all the time, you know, the next generation is going to be the one that's taking care of us. So what are we imparting them? Stay with me. I'm glad you asked. Stay with me. And what dolls has to do with Christmas? Oh, you better not click that, that button. You stay right here because I've got something for you. I've got something for us. You've got me in my teacher's mode right now. <laughs> Well, I want you to know, a few years ago, my friend, and you know this already, but a few years ago, nearly all little girls, ooh, all the little girls, you know, they, 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 uh, you know, had already selected, and sometimes they had so many choices, they didn't know what to say, but they all wanted a pretty baby doll for Christmas. Do you remember? Do you remember your baby doll? Oh, I remember it. I've got some... We won't go into it today, but I want you to know that I have some real live, meaningful testimonies of my own. But I just share with you that my daughter, yeah, as a parent, oh, I really got excited then because, you know, I had a little bit more cash flow and having only one daughter. So we made a big deal out of it. Do you remember the cabbage pack? Ooh, if you had a cabbage patch, baby, and they came in all types of uh, um, designs and pedigrees, you know, and races and cultural. Oh, and she got a black one, too. Mm, that cabbage patch. I tell you, dolls was a big, big, big thing right then. But I want you to know that. Um, but many parents, you know this, many parents today discourage their children, their little girls from getting dolls. Oh, you don't need a doll. Let's get you a stuffed animal or let's get you a pet. Dolls are, are you know, you know, it's, it's there in the stores, you know, and the market is there. But uh, to encourage, the, you know, the baby doll, you know, the caring for baby, the diapers, you know. Oh, I remember so some of those dolls, they wet, some talk, you know, some even crawl, some walk. But that little girl was just so excited to get the baby doll of her choice. And I can tell you something else. It was traditional. For most little boys, you know, they wanted, uh, you know, a car, a truck, or airplane, some type of mechanical vehicle transportation type device, you know. And you didn't hear too many boys say anything about, you know, they wanted baby dolls, you know. But you know, the dolls are manufactured both male and female, old and young, teenagers and all. But a lot of the dads, you know, uh, I've heard I've heard the conversations, and I know you have too. That boy better not be playing with a dog, and they, out of lack of knowledge, out of lack of education, you know, they 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 thought by this child who is a human himself, you know, who has mom and daddy taking care of him, that they 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 didn't understand the developmental process and the preparation that was needed for just basically participating in home living skills. So a lot of little boys, they were, they were forbidden to play with little dolls. Stay with me. We're going somewhere with this. Again, our subject today is why should we keep dolls in Christmas? I think you see where I'm going with this. Well, and the whole point is that, oh, um, as it related again to the social, emotional, physical, and intellectual growth, health and growth, health and growth of children as we prepare them for adulthood and for future parenting. Again, I want you to know that uh, um, I have a question to ask you. Well, let me go back and say this too. Uh, just the opposite. Previous years, many fathers forbid their boys to play with dolls or in the home living areas. You know, in schools, you have the different subject areas. You know, you have the math, the science, the geometry, and all these other type classes in the school. Well, in early childhood, home living is a major area of their learning. And home learning, home living, as well in high school, you know, I am a family consumer science professional you know, home economics and everything that I'm telling you right now, that's what I do, 
you know, I'm retired, but I'm still working, but on a professional level. So what I'm saying is that this is not wasted time when you are investing in, in allowing a child to have humanitarian experiences for professional or their professional future occupations, as well as for humanitarian parenting purposes. Well, I want you to, to uh, help me with this, but I want you to know that um, a question, since we have discussed the pros and cons for the mom and dads approving or disapproving their sons, you know, to play with dolls, male or female. You know, they're male and female dolls, okay? Old and young, teenagers and all. But um, which parents as adults are you yourselves? Which parents are taking care of the children today at home? In real life, real day, which parents, the mom or the dad? Well, <coughs> excuse me, whether or not because of their occupation or child custody, perhaps even death. Are you getting the idea now? If you are a parent, at some point, we are responsible for caring for our children. And sometimes they may be the opposite gender. They may be mom having to take care of the sons or dads having to take care of the daughters. Do you see how all of this is fitting together later on futuristic as far as parenting? If this child has been taught, now that's a hallelujah moment there. If this child has been taught throughout his or her early childhood, throughout school, you know, you know, a, a generic gender, you know, a cliche, you know, boys not supposed to do the girl. What type of parent are they going to be? What type of parent are they going to be? Would they be a non-connecting parents? Where are you listening to me? Where their child's support and affection will be made available to negative groups or to negative relationships? In other words, where are they going to seek love? Love is a basic need. These are humanistic needs. Oh, do I, well, I want to stay there, but we don't have the time. But I want you to understand that, 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 that I, and I don't want to say you understand, you know this already, but this is not, you know, a, 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 a choice, a snap and go situation, a, a love, intellectual, Physical, emotional, and social. These are needs, just like a heartbeat and oxygen. We have to breathe. Our heart has to beat. So if we neglect the opportunity for them to learn or to be engaged with positive activity for human development, I'm afraid that we may be blocking them from a very important opportunity for parenting. Well, I want you to know that today's market, many of the infants, clothing, toys, care equipment, strollers, beddings, blankets, they have evolved to the pet care market and industry. My girlfriend and I, we were out eating, you know, to a really nice little restaurant. We sat down on the patio. We saw this couple, you know, middle-aged couple, you know, and they, they, you know, walked to that table and they were pushing a stroller, you know, 
And I'm going, oh, my goodness. I want to say almost like congratulations. You keep a little baby, you know. And, and um, it was a pet. I don't know how the how the, the male felt. Because he surely wasn't, you know, you know it, wasn't, it wasn't any heredity. <laughs> there was no hereditary features, you know. But I, I agree, you know, maybe that was just their, 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 the moments that they were sharing, you know. But uh, uh, we have to be intentional about persevering and preserving the humanity, uh, emotional needs of children, and the appreciation for the care of children. You know, I'm not against pets, you know. You know, do what you do. But they are secondary to humans. And, and you know, I, 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 I raised my hand on the Bible on that. And, I, and the Bible confirms that uh, pets are not human. They are pets. And no matter how much we love them, they are not going to give us a generational return. And, 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 and our negligence for not, oh, that's a hallelujah moment. Our negligence for uh, dismissing the care of our children for future parenting comes back on us because the violence, you know, the all the other uh, uh, terrible crime actions that are taking place, you know, uh, something has been neglected. And we're going to have to do better. And we, we cannot be, we cannot be intimidated by embracing parenting skills and the love for humans. The love for humans. Well, that's just something to think about. Well, I just want you to know, how has this affected the desire, care, and empathy or the empathetic needs of children? You know, I saw one lady, she's pregnant, as pregnant as she can be, you know, about to have the baby any time. She's holding her dog, rubbing her stomach with one hand and, and kissing the dog with the other. Hey, that's your option. But a child should never, ever feel like, oh, holly, that's, oh, that's another hallelujah moment. A child should never feel they are in competition with their parent for love, care, and affection compared to a pet. You know I want to shout right now. I, you know, this is Facebook. And, you know, Facebook, you know, they, they have a community guidelines, you know, and, you know, uh, you know, but in a private setting, I could go with this. I could go with it. Because when we start talking about Christ, oh, hallelujah, Christ is the reason for the season. Who? A savior? Now, that's a point right there, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's a point right there, you know. <laughs> Dead, die, bury, restoration, the king of kings. Yeah, yeah. And I, but I will say this, and I will say this, I will say this. God did not uh, create no heaven and hell for pets. I just stop right there. I'll stop right there. But our sweet boys and girls, our babies. Oh, I, I went to a catalog. And, and oh, this market industry for pet, and I love it. It's okay. Go for it. You know anything that you love, you 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 deserve to give it your best care. You deserve to do that, and and that's and that's okay. But I'm telling you, that is a market. That's that's a. a I don't know how many millions of dollar market, but it is on the rise, and it is high. And, but that's okay. But let's not neglect our children, our, our, our emotional need and care for our children. Something to think about. Uh, uh, they have er everything you can think of, you know, everything. When I'm, I am a, a professional entrepreneur or professional, I mean high-level professional or early learning center, and, and the State Department gives us, oh, give us uh, strategic guidelines or the type of equipment that, that is required in uh, the, the basic uh, equipment 
and tools that are required in a daycare center that promote the early learning and development of children. And of course, they give the base, but you can always, you know, add to it, you know. But as far as the little, the little rest area, you know, the, the, the reading, the quiet time, you know, or the, oh, the reading. But what are we doing for our children? What are we doing for our children? Oh, just something to think about. Well, let me just share this with you. Stay with it. Oh, I'm, I do want to rush on because I don't want to hold you. But this is good. And just in case you find yourself having to leave, come back and you can replay it anytime. I'll be on Facebook as well as I'm going to transfer it to YouTube. Okay. But while I'm thinking, help me answer these top three questions. This is important for you. Okay. Um, I I am also to you know uh, early childhood entrepreneur. Okay. But also to a high school occupational um, child care teacher. So I, I have taught uh, um, daycare and, and in professional education, elementary education, preschool education on the high school level. So I've dealt with uh, the, my, my little friends and parents, as well as my almost grown folks, I call them the high school. So I'm gonna be giving you some realistic true information that uh, I have experienced and heard true testimonies from them, okay? This is not make-believe, okay? But my first question is um, for you is that we know that in present day, both male and females dolls are manufactured. Do you feel that both male and female children should be given the opportunity to participate in home living, play, at home, at school, and early childhood facilities. I think we've already just covered that. My answer is absolutely yes. I hope yours will be too. But if not, then there will be a discussion that you would have with your child's teacher because these are state mandate regulations, okay, and for the total learning and preparation of the child, okay? So the next question would be, um, get this, are you with me? How old should a child be when they are no longer allowed to play with dolls or to receive a doll as a present? What about you? We talking about Christmas or any other time? You know, did you voluntarily say, well, mom, I don't want a doll, I'm too big for a doll. Did you say that? Some kids say that. If that be the case, they're all right. They're ready to go to the next level. There are others who may say, I want a baby doll. And some parents may say, well, hey, you know, you're too big for a doll. Again, what I want to, to uh, zoom in for you uh, or to emphasize to you is that love is a human need. And, you know, no matter how many children a parent may have, you know, we're all gifted with certain talents and gifts. And plus, you know, just by being female, most of us are, we're born with motherly instincts, you know, to care and to love. Most of us are, you know, but uh, some kids may not uh, be engaged in their family. They may not get that intimate type of love and their love need may be a little higher. I'll put it that way. Well, the thing about it is that as long as they playing with that dog, um, they're going to be okay. They're healthy. But get this right here. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Uh, those, 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 those teenage girls? Uh, uh, you know, junior high girls, middle school girls? You know? Uh, they want to love either the doll or a baby. I've heard live testimonies. I've heard live testimonies of why young girls, you know, get pregnant. You know? And, and, and ones who have been educated well on the pros and cons of, 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 of pregnancy, of early pregnancy. But they go like, um, they view a baby, a child, as a doll. They say things like, it's true, I'm telling you. They say, uh, I want someone to play with. I want someone to love me and someone that I can love. 
when they see a baby, they like combing the baby hair. They like dressing the baby into the cute clothes. But when, you know, hey, difficult, challenging times are going to come. As a mother, we know that. The baby's going to get sick. The baby's not going to be all the time smiling, you know. Yeah. And some even say, even when they have a child, and that child grows up to toddler size, and that child becomes a little bit more independent, then the child goes like, you know, I want to do it myself. And then the mom feels uh, 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 neglected. And she has another baby because she feel like that older one is older and don't don't love her anymore. It happens. As a professional, and you can talk to any other professional in this area, and they'll tell you the same thing. So when a child is 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 is, I don't want to say committed, but I guess too. But 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 if they are still connected, that's the word I want to use. If a doll is giving them a peace of mind, uh, that's not going to hurt them at all. It's going to be health because at some point they're going to let go. And then it can evolve from the doll to actually be, of course, again, enrolling in child care classes or being a helper or with a mentor at daycare centers or to help care for a child. Then they will understand the fact is that, you know, uh, uh, this is like part time. You know, you can assist, you know, in, in exit the job and go home. That's what a doll does. You play with it, you put it down, and you go on. But with a real life baby, that's not the case. That is an ongoing lifetime responsibility. So they need to, 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 to spend as much time as they can with the reality of a doll. Learning adult principles for later mature parenthood. Oh, that was good. That was good. And the last one I want to ask you here, too. Um, oh, 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 one other thing. One other thing here, too, about, uh, um, you know, <laughs> from a high school teacher, a uh, high school teacher, is that uh, uh, um, um, dolls, okay, um, um, yes, uh, uh, um, as an educator, you know, uh, teaching both male and female students in an early childhood facility or in a high school setting. And from research as well as personal experience, what I'm teaching is that I found like there are lots of young men who love uh, to take parenting classes. But we're going to see later on that's one of the disadvantages and that is, is that uh, there are negative uh, connotations that goes. In other words, they get joked. So a lot of them, they don't want to or get jokes so they frown, you know, tend not to um, enroll in those classes. But there are a lot of young men who 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 are great and they love parents who and they love being taught because they have not heard anything of that sort, you know, or uh, at school or with their parents. You know, the old irresponsible thing about the guys sowing their oats and all that, you know, that is that's crazy. That's crazy. And and now we want to point the fingers at the youth. I, I would I would sincerely, and I've said it over and over and over again, and you know, it's like I'm talking to a brick wall. Churches and, and youth groups, you know, should pray and seek the Lord in, in, in how to offer parenting, parenting for youth and parenting for 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 single parents or young parents or teen, get some type of education. Because because it's the, the, the majority of the people are pointing the finger at the results and not gathering together by proactive means for solutions. Oh, that's a hallelujah moment all by itself. And let me ask you this right here, too. Well, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you this one free here, too. <laughs> and, and, and about it being age appropriate. Age appropriate is very, 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 very important. Age appropriate is mean that if, if your child's a child, you know, and uh, um, take care of a baby. You know, Barbie is not a baby, right? Bar Barbara has breasts and everything else that goes along with it. Plus, she has a, a, a boyfriend. 
Ken, I believe his name is. <laughs> and there are a lot of other adults. One. So parents have to uh, be resourceful and, and supervise as well as educators or, or to understand uh, what the true learning objective is and the motive for playing with dolls. Okay. Uh, um, and, and I don't want to get ahead of myself because uh, dolls are very instrumental. But let me just ask you this other question then. Are dolls restricted only to the young and healthy? To the young and healthy. Well, for the sake of time, I just tell you, no, it's not. Dolls are used from, from uh, small children to the elderly and the uh, disability or the disabled. Uh, in nursing homes, I have seen even in independent living, you know, uh, some really, really nice, well-to-do uh, older children uh, in caring for their elderly parents, you know, um, because, you know, that's all the elderly parent ever did, you know, they really, really dedicated their lives to the care of their children or grandchildren. And now, you know, they're all older and, you know, and moved away in their own homes. Um, she had a baby doll. And, and and the mom really loved that baby doll, and she would talk to her. She would rock, and so it's therapeutic, you know. Yeah, so dolls can be therapeutic to even an elderly person. A lot of time in the nursing homes, you know, right now, uh, a lot of uh, individuals are getting, you know, a wish list for donations. You know, the footies, the the whatever, you know, there, uh, the blankets, the throws, whatever. But you know, sometimes, you know. Hey, they just want a doll too. It's very therapeutic, okay? Uh, and speaking of therapeutic dolls, they are also use dolls. I also use, oh my goodness, and we're going to talk about this perhaps just a little bit later too. But uh, they are also, uh, um, oh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I can't, I can't tell it all. I can't tell it all. But uh, parents and childcare professionals are those who work with children. Realize that, uh, you know. Uh, when, when children, oh, mm, when children are given private time to play with dolls, mom and dads, are you listening? When children are given private time to play, you know, they just playing, you know, you know, they just playing, you know, nobody say anything. If you stand back, that child is going to uh, uh, re- Re-engage or re, 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 how can I say it? Reproduce whatever scene that they have, you know, recently seen. Okay? A, a lot of times with Department of Human Services, if there are abusive cases, you know, that they, they have the out of, they have their out. Uh, Atomical dolls, you know, with, with real life or, or reproductive organs, you know, uh, and the child, uh, they they're able to just 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 demonstrate uh, what happened, you know, or, or that is in one case, and other times when um and hey, those teenagers are just as worse, you know, teenagers. They just do things on purpose, you know, but 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 for a child, it's always an innocent act. Whenever you see a child perform anything, and, and they don't lie about this. Matter of fact, they're not talking at all. You just see them or or, or um taking certain actions, they you know, or if it's uh, male and female or you know, and they'll do it. I'm telling you. Whatever a child see, they do not forget. Whether it's sexual, regular sex, oral sex, anal sex, or slapping, hitting, cursing, whatever the case may be, that dog is going to get whatever's been done to them or whatever they have seen. Now that's a hallelujah moment. Sometimes, and parents know this already, you know, and sometimes the fear may be, you know, you know, but let's, let's strive on the positive. Let's strive on the, on the, on the kind words or even, or, or 
a, a, a positive discipline, a redirective behavior where a child can say, no, no, Judy, you cannot have this because uh, you did such and such and uh, you, you're going to have to have time out or you're going to have to sit in the chair. You know, that that gives whoever is caring for the child an implication that, you know, they're being around some positive role models. But, you know, this child can curse from from A to Z and, you know, and all these words, men, they're going to tell that dog just what has been told to them. And that's what we don't want. But that's a good thing that it gets to come out because that gives you an opportunity to understand, you know, what areas that you need to improve on. But can you imagine if the dog was never there? Oh, that's another hallelujah moment. Can you imagine if the dog was never there and this child had this all bottled up inside of them? That's why a lot of those crimes take place and people will say, I had no idea they was thinking about this. I Hey, from rape to assault to the whole nine yards, these children, children are, are old. Their, their little emotions are overwhelmed. There has been no outlet because parents do not see them as, as, as the human they are and knowing what overload looks like. Oh, that's a hallelujah moment. Ooh, you know I can stop right now. Ooh, mm -mm. Again, if you have just come on, I want you to know that today's show is Why Keep Dolls in Christmas. Oh, you know I want to spend some time on this Christmas. Oh, mm, because Christmas is Christ. You know, the Bible clearly said, suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven. Oh, he likes all about children. He started as a child. And I want you all to know that little baby that I, I have on my um, thumbnail for this show. Hey, that's not a dog. That's my grandson. <laughs> I'm so proud of that. But I just want you to know that, that uh, 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 if we want... And if we truly desire our next generation children to be positive parents and, and to, to love uh, their children and to turn things around, we have got to give them. We've got to be the leader. We've got to, to, to train and guide them with positive role models. And they must have the example. Oh, but let me ask you this before we go, before we go. But, uh, did you know? Did you know that there are psychological benefits and disadvantages for dogs? Well, here are some benefits, and I've covered up a little bit already. I'm just going to review. <laughs> I'll get all caught up in this. But here are some benefits of playing with dolls. Would you like to hear them? Well, social skills. Again, social skills. This is when children can practice communication, empathy, and problem solving by caring for their dolls. Oh, they'll talk to those dolls just like, oh, and you get just to hear their inner thoughts. That's what you really want to get, the inner thoughts. Uh, practice communication. In other words, are they using uh, 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 acceptable languages? Uh, are they cursing? Are they using profanity? And sometimes parents go, you said that curse word, you where did you get it from? Hey, you just curse them out. That's where they got it from. Whatever you give them, they're going to repeat it. It's going to be instilled in them. Oh, and empathy. It's like it's like we're living in a world where people like them, you know, they can hurt you or harm you and not think twice about it. That's empathy. Empathy is not just feeling sorry for a person. It is when you are, you have the ability to feel what they feel. In other words, you care. Problem solving. The doll helps in developing a child's social skill. Imagination. Dolls can be a blank canvas for children's imagination, allowing them to create stories and explore new worlds. 
You get to know where the head is, you know, what you want to do. You want to go to the ice cream parlor? I'm going to give you this. Oh, but you can't have that. You'll find them saying some of the same instruction that you gave them. But you can't have this. Oh, you, can, you can't have too much candy because that will give you cavities. You go, ooh, no, you cannot have all sodas. We need some milk. Do you need some water? And then if they do something, they'll, they have an imagination now. And then they'll turn around if somebody did something, they'll respond to that. And sometimes uh, they spank it, spank it, spank it. Not just spank it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Spanking, hitting, slapping, throwing against the wall. You know, and those who care for children, when they observe these kinds of things, that put them to notice. No one of this little child acts such and such way. Because this is some of the things they either experience or this is something they have observed. Ooh! And they have all kind of techno technological dolls right now. Oh, yeah, they have dolls for not just the preschool, they have for the high school, the educational classes. These are on computer discs, you know, the holler, the screen. They have the crack baby. I had the crack baby uh, as part of my team once, you know, the rotation. And crack baby came back mixed up. Crack baby has an accelerated cry, just like an accelerated a car. It won't get quiet. You know, the parents were... You know, the students' parents were going, don't you bring that doll back here no more. And they were so glad to bring it back to school. But they were like, I don't want a baby like that. Well, see, they have that choice. They have that choice. Oh, mm, mm, mm. okay. Emotional intelligence. Children can learn to express their emotions in healthy ways by confronting a crying doll or badgering and um, bad aging and injured one. You get to see how they re they respond to pain. Can you can you see oh, oh how important a doll is? And it can be led. It can be led by the parents uh, for the different types of engagement. And parents can ask questions. That does 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 your what is your doll name? Does does Judy or or whatever her name is, does she have a cold, you know? And she's going outside, you know, she's going to be, uh, 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 you think she's going to need a blanket, you know? All this help them in developing their parenting skills because many of our children would never take, and take the truth, a lot of the school district, you know, a lot of those classes are not even offered anymore. Yeah. And so if the parent or churches, uh, teens and parenting uh, classes are not offered, who's going to teach them? Then there's no excuse. What other choice will they have? Pregnancy and, and they don't understand the foundation of care. You know, it's easy to point the finger, but what are we doing about it? If you are a, a um, if you well, just basic parenting, you know, basic parent, and I do understand that parents have some challenges too now because every parent cannot teach children, but it may be that they can, uh, uh, they can be an assistant or 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 helper to one who is trained in the area, because just because you are oh, and that's another. That's a hallelujah moment, all by us. Just because you're 21, 36, 45, even 62, does not mean that you have the skills and capability to 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 train <laughs> and spearhead a, a youth a parenting class. But that has to be carefully, carefully, carefully uh, uh, directed under uh, supervision and state guidelines. I'm sure all the professionals, the nurses and the educators, they, they, they're there one who can really help you, even your health department, oh, that they can help you, okay? But uh, the nurturing skills, children can practice nurturing and caring skills in a safe environment. Oh, yeah, that's what class and education does, okay? Uh, uh, perspective, it helps you uh, uh, determine from perspective, judgments, uh, um, Parental wisdom, you know, or in, de in determining of what is feasible. Laws are important, you know. Laws and regulations. Oh, this just goes on and on. And once you begin to to really uh, 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 pray about this, then you the answer is going to be clear. It's it's going to be so clear. 
or, or the, the teaching and training we need most is fading away and we've got to do something about it. Okay. And it's not expensive at all. Okay. But, um, but let's talk about some disadvantages now, some disadvantages, uh, um, uh, disadvantages of, of the doll. And then again, the social stigma, you know, it just, the people who don't want to know, you know, you know, the negative people, I won't say the bad boy, but the negative people, you know, um, the dad that don't stay at home, the dad who doesn't want a family, non-family people, they speak negative with this because they don't have time for them. They just want to, you know, baby, baby, let me go. You know, all that kind of stuff, you know, but, but all family people, you know, they don't have a problem with this at all. And I can tell you this in my classes, those young men with the, with the babies, oh, they were just, they were, they were so, so embracive. They, I mean, just wonderful. I love my male students because there are so many wonderful dads out there. And if you go to my website, or I have a lot of information there, free information, links there. If you click on that concerning the teen dad, uh, it would really surprise you because oh, when I went to, uh, to collect some research, especially with the black male, because you know everybody want to say the, the, the dead with dead beat dads, you know, and and that does not represent, you know, or our populations at all, our culture. But the bottom line, what I found is that there was very little documentation of any type of research or survey. Because the bottom line, <laughs> kind of like the presidential campaign, campaign, a lot of people just refused to vote, refused to get involved. So therefore, you know, those those figures can calculate. But, I, but for myself as an educator, professional educator, I've learned that there are so many wonderful, wonderful high school students, and they are not fathers. And then I've and I've also met several of them who are doing their best to to be productive dads, and they're working. They are, you know, they are participating in, in, in the child rearing as far as contribution of the funds. Okay, so uh, um, escape. <laughs> Escapism, uh, um, you know, find an excuse to not deal with it. You know, your friends have a lot to do with what you embrace. Uh, if, if your friends are, are parental minded, if they care, then you all are going to, um, you know, you're going to encourage each other. But if one, you know, doesn't, then it's going to be just the opposite. And that's when it's it's important that our teens understand what is um I would call it good company versus negative company because if, if you are a, a, a dedicated father or a mother or you care about human beings and you know your your guy or your friend doesn't you know then uh, you got to have um you got to be brave. You got to be strong to decide whether or not that is a relationship you want to continue. Okay, because the Bible clearly says that how can two walk together except they agree? And as a parent, your child will be the benefactor of whatever your decision is. Oh my goodness! Oh, that mm, that's a mouthful right there. And of course, identity conflict. Right now, you know, you know, hey, parents, pull your bootstraps up. You know, we have got to be open minded. We have got to be realistic and flexible for change. Uh, our world is changing. There's no doubt about that. Our country is changing. Rules, regulations, laws, family style, everything is changing. What is okay today may not be okay tomorrow. Uh, as, as far as our, our dolls right now, uh, you know, as in our previous years, uh, mostly it's been, you know, Male, female. We don't know where it's going from here. But uh, uh, it's important that parents take control of their homes to give your child um, a positive uh, guidance based on your principles and values. Your principles and values. And if you don't take a stand, somebody else will. Okay? And that may not be something that you agree with, but you have the opportunity. And of course, early Learning and early beginners are very, very important. And if you embrace that, you know, I talk about the the, the five, um, you know, um, 
essential needs of, of children, you know. And so if you um, if you uh, make that a priority with prayer, you know, we just have to be, parenting is work, period. It's work. It's not a commercial, you know. Uh, we get what we put into it, okay? Okay, and, and over, over attachment, um, um, that's what the, something about the dolls, of course. Uh, if it's a doll, you can pick it up and, you know, and leave it when you want. But if it's a human, then you won't have that chance, okay? So, um, let's see where I was here. Okay, yeah, here we go, here we go. Okay. I almost lost my place there. But, uh, um, well, I could, I could talk about this all day and night, all day and night, because, <laughs> okay, okay, uh, of course, uh, you've come on again, the major, major uh, purpose for this show is that, uh, that you will consider the significance and importance of nurture, which is long-term, and nurturing short-term children, okay? Okay, so, um... Okay, okay, yeah. okay, here you go. Okay, uh, don't be misled. Don't be misled, my friends. My high schoolers, male versus female, they do enjoy parenting. And I should say, it's very, very, if they're interacting and should always be age appropriate, supervised, okay? We understand that. But on uh, the love, are you with me? The love for children and child care are expressed and connect in various ways. Personal fulfillment, personal fulfillment, um, connecting in child care and love for children, personal fulfillment, and also to another word, you know, the, 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 the personal fulfillment um, that love need is met, you, uh, that love of expression is met. You want to be a volunteer, and those in um, churches, children church, you get to be volunteers or with youth groups, you know, but they just want to, to embrace. And of course, the same thing you can do with animals too, but then again, animals and humans are, 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 are totally different, totally different, totally different. But uh, also too, Oh, I want you to know that whenever there's a child who um, who who has the personality or desire, you know, or I want to babysit, can I help this or can I have a dog, you know, do not turn a deaf ear to that because this is, it, it could very well connect with a professional educational area, okay? Whether that be a law firm in family law, whether that be health care, doctors and nurses, entertainers, educators, clergy, government. We call it people skills. Yes, that's a good way of saying it. People skills. You care. You know how to talk to folks. You know how to deal with people that may be experiencing uh, traumatic areas in that family. You know, grief, hurt, pain. You just don't talk to them any kind of way. You got to have tact. They call them bedside manners. So someone who is caring and loving, hey, a dog, give that child found a foundational opportunity, whatever level that child is, and you get a chance to to hear that and to, ex to observe their, their inner feelings through their outer expressions. Okay? Are you still with me? Well, I want you to know, my friend, in conclusion, yes, in conclusion, we're just about there. In conclusion, baby dolls are a popular Christmas gift not only are they gift, hey, uh, I one of those pair also sentimental. You know, they cherish that first baby doll. Some baby dolls you want to keep for a lifetime, you know. <laughs> but baby dolls, okay. And then my son later on, uh, I'm not sure if you remember Buddy. Buddy was a a toddler sized little doll. He came in different uh, 
races and colors, you know, so buddy. So I gave him a man style buddy doll, you know, so, uh, so, you know, hey, parents can be very creative, you know, but baby dolls are popular Christmas gifts and highly effective for promoting humanitarian characteristics. Children develop social and emotional skills, imagination, and creativity that connects to future parenting skills. Yes, I said it. Parenting skills and professional occupations. Playing with dolls can also help children understand the world around them and enhance their appreciation for diverse communities. Oh, I said a mouthful right then. No longer are children in their later life are surrounded by just their neighborhood, you know, group, neighbors. Diversity is everywhere. It's important that we are flexible and we learn to be okay with people who are different. Both parents should be accountable. Both parents, mom and dad, I'm speaking of, either as a teen parent or a later adult, or even grandparents. Both parents should be accountable and responsible for learning techniques for successful parenting. I want to thank you all for joining. I see you on, and I do thank you. It's a late night, but hey, it's the, yeah, I call it the follow la 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 time. It's Christmas holidays, so a lot of your schedules are going to be a little bit different, the midnight hour. So here, I'll be here, and you can uh, replay as often as you can. But I want to thank you for joining our holiday show, which is Why Keep Dolls in Christmas? As we focused and differentiated the two key terms to nurture children. When you nurture anything, that's for your long-term care. Versus nourish, N-O-U-R-I-S-H, and nourish when you provide that immediate need. You know, give them some lunch, give them some dinners, but hey, what about next year and the next year and the next year? We don't just want to nourish our children, but we want to nurture them. Mending our society. My friend, did you hear me? With all this criticism, take your mouth off the youth because they can only produce what we give them. That's a hallelujah moment right there. That's a come to Jesus moment. We know what's wrong with our young people. We've got to do better. Men in our society for healthy homes begins within the family. It's great to love and care for our pets, but those Pet, but those skills would not nurture or nourish the next generation. This Christmas, my friend, let's remember our focus scripture. And I believe this is true for the male and female, Malachi 4 and 6. Everybody's talking about 2025. Ooh, that's another hallelujah moment. Regardless what happens into government, I can't say that enough. We have the power to lay a loving foundation in our homes. Mm, where people are communicating and sharing and loving and kindness, and making do with what they have of their available resources. Yes, where well, respect, love, harmony, biblical principles. Oh, Malachi 4 and 6 says, God, and our prayer is that, that God would turn the hearts of the fathers and mothers to the children 
and the hearts of the children to their fathers and mothers. In other words, take out the resentment, take out the hurt and pain. We're going to love each other. We're going to respect each other. This show, my friend, has been brought to you by Resolve 2010 LLC. That is my family resource company for parenting, student intervention, and healthy adult relationships. Please visit my website at www.resolved-2010.com. That's where you will be able to instantly, I mean instantly connect with all my social media social media pages, educational resources, and connect with my YouTube Real Talk. Oh, you want to go there. Uh, this show here is in my Real Talk videos among many, 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 many others. Okay. All of my free family, teens, and relationship free videos. Go to my website and all you have to do is just click, click, click. Everything is there so you can see it. You can go through uh, YouTube and scroll and, you know, type my name in and all that kind of stuff. But but if you go to my website, you can just click, click, click. You're going to see everything that you need. Okay? And uh, don't forget, yes, on that same website, you're going to see my three incredible books. Three incredible books. Bestsellers. Yes. <laughs> Yes, as time progresses on, there will be an appreciation for these books. Right now, many people, you know, they may turn their head or, or treat them like snacks. <laughs> but I can promise you, hey, there is a word in there for you because God cares about our family. God cares about our children, okay? Well, I want you to know that uh, right now, I'm going to say good night. Good night for now, and may God continue to bless you, to bless each of you uh, this week. Yes, during this holidays, I want to um, say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all of you. Yes, yes. Merry, 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 Merry Christmas. Keep the Christ in Christmas, and Jesus is the reason for the season. I want you to stay safe, stay blessed, and know that I love you. Good night. God bless. <laughs>